city volunteers conduct winter distribution in Gansu province, reconnecting with the local residents. We learn about the health impact of eating red chili from city doctors. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. We begin our program today with news from China. In China, Gansu province lacks water source and has inconvenient transportation, making it one of the poorest provinces in the country. Since 1998, city volunteers have been building water cellars for local residents, and the connection never stopped. Every year, city volunteers hold winter distributions there. This year, the first distribution is in Weiyuan County, benefiting more than 1,000 households. The temperature is negative 11 degrees Celsius, but more than 100 Suji volunteers from seven provinces are preparing for the winter aid distribution in the freezing wind. In Suji, I feel very different warmth and love and the happiness of giving, because this is a kind of meaning in life. I feel I found the meaning of my life in Suji family. The space of the original distribution location is not enough to accommodate thousands of local residents, so the volunteers found Longting High School as the backup plan. Yesterday when we arrived, we volunteers started to clean the accumulated snow inside, but the snow here is hotter and didn't smell yet. So from yesterday afternoon to this morning, we have been trying to deal with the snow before the distribution. The original distribution line has also been adjusted after the change of the location, and the volunteers used their wisdom to handle the accidental change joyfully. We hope that by extending the line it will be easier for local residents to receive the supplies, which also save their time. They can bring the aid supplies home as soon as possible to share with their family. Suji Foundation started to form a friendship with Gansu local residents in the year of 1998 when they helped to build water cellar in Gansu. For 20 years, Suji volunteers' love can be seen everywhere in Huangtu Plateau, and they meet up with the locals every year at the winter aid distribution. Suji Foundation has done so many solid dedications for the poor people here in Gansu province. Although the supplies have limited value, but Zuji volunteers' wholehearted love is priceless. As almost all of the local residents living in the mountain have no working ability, Zuji volunteers bring aid supplies for winter to more than a thousand households, as well as a moisture their hands with love. She says, I can't speak well as I only say thank you. What you've done for us is really good deeds, and your kindness made me feel very grateful and warm. I will always remember you all, and thank you. City volunteers in Yichun, Jiangxi, China, held a year and blessing ceremony to give scholarships to high school students in need. Many students said that they will repay the kindness by doing good deeds, saving money in coin banks, and doing recycling. Students go to school to learn knowledge and also morality, so city's assistance starts a cycle of love. I want to give my shining smile to other people so they can have happiness and sunshine. My strength is limited, but I will do all I can, such as encouraging my classmates to collect recyclable bottles and paper. Actually, I found that when a person is willing to lend a helping hand, that person will become very rich. People rich in spirit are willing to pray for peace on earth, and there are also those willing to donate money to help other people solve their problems. In our next report, we meet a city volunteer whose business was ruined in a fire accident 30 years ago. After the incident, he once thought about ending his own life. Then after his wife joined Siji, he followed in her footsteps and became a city volunteer. He said that since joining Siji, he has started anew and is no longer a self-centered person. 
一个电线走火，火灾后就是面临首先就经济问题啊，钱从哪里来？啊，负债怎么还？About 30 years ago, a fire accident destroyed Ling Jianlong's watch business and injured his hands. Men with responsibilities cannot jump into the ocean, otherwise I want to end my life. After the accident, his wife Chen Guizhou took up the responsibilities of caring for the in-laws and her two sons. However, the in-laws were stubborn and the sons were rebellious. To help her vent her emotions, Lin let her join Ciji. Nevertheless, her busy volunteer work also worried him. There are only the two of us working at my company. When she is not around, I am the only one left. Ciji was taking away my manpower. I really like the sign language performers, and after I came home, I told him I wanted to learn sign language songs. He would not allow me in the first year, second year. By the third year, I could not take this anymore. The supporter behind every man is very important. She makes an impact on the family and influences the husband. Following in his wife's footsteps, Lin has also joined the big Ciji family. I've changed since joining Ciji. I feel that I've started anew. My views and attitude have changed and I'm no longer self-centered. He was once occupied with making money. However, now he's helping the sick and poor and learning to let go of his own worries in the process. Abdullah Halim was a Tsujike recipient in Malacca, Malaysia. In 2011, when his life was in distress, Tsujike not only provided him with rental subsidy, but also cared for him. In 2016, he was diagnosed with liver cancer, and his health condition had worsened ever since. This year, he seized the opportunity to attend Malacca's Year of Blessing ceremony with his family. Unfortunately, he suddenly passed away at the age of 62, three days later. In 2016, Abdullah Halim, a Tsuji care recipient from Malacca, was diagnosed with liver cancer. Doctors no longer give him any medicine. They only give him morphine to prevent him from feeling the pain. Seven years ago, when Halin's life was in distress, in addition to offering subsidies to him, Ciji also provided him with assistance and care. He was deeply moved by Ciji's kindness. Even though he was in poor health, he promised the volunteers that he must attend this year's year-end blessing ceremony in Malacca. <laughs> Abiding by his promise, Abdullah Halin and his family happily had a reunion with Ciji. No matter whether I feel comfortable or not, I must come because my friends are here. I must come here. I worried about his health condition, so I thought he would be absent. I'm surprised that he has such strong will to attend a year and blessing ceremony. For his separation from his family, currently his three children have become Ciji scholarship recipients. In the future, we will continue to care for them and help them. <laughs> Although Halim's life has come to an end, Ciji's love will always accompany his family. While many people love to eat spicy food, red chili actually has health benefits. It can boost blood circulation and has abundant vitamins. However, those with digestive problems or high blood pressure should avoid eating spicy food. Three, two, one, eat! Red chili looks attractive and tastes very spicy. At the chili eating contest in foreign country, contestants often eat red chili till their tears fill their eyes. There are a lot of people who love to eat red chili. 
能够调调味啊。冬天就吃对身体有帮助啊，你会暖和一点啊。Fang Jielin, who's from Anhui of China, loves to eat red chili. The weather is colder in my hometown, and every family eats red chili. We eat more red chili during winter because it's too cold. The temperature here has dropped to below zero degrees Celsius. Having moved to Taiwan for 11 years, Fang's eating habits have not changed. She now makes red chili sauce. Fang has become well known for making spicy oil, spicy sauce, and spicy bean sauce. Sometimes I share it with other people. Then people told me, "Why not make it so we can buy it from you?" Even her husband's family have fallen in love with red chili. It is fragrant and spicy, and after eating it, I feel warm. <laughs> Sometimes when I don't have an appetite, spicy food gives me a better appetite. Besides being tasty, red chili actually contains abundant vitamins. It contains vitamin A, vitamin C, and dietary fiber. In terms of minerals, it contains calcium as well as potassium and phosphorus. Eating spicy food can boost blood circulation and aid one's bowel movement. The capsaicin in red chili can aid one's bowel movement. It metabolizes the gas in our bodies, so we won't feel bloated. However, it is not suitable for people who have digestive problems. Patients who have gastroesophageal reflux, esophagitis, or peptic ulcer or other problems should avoid it. The doctor reminds us that patients with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and high glucose should avoid eating spicy hot pot. For the blood pressure, It affects those with high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. It's also not suitable for patients with gout. Besides being spicy, the food is usually also high in sodium and oil, and will worsen the conditions of patients with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and high blood sugar. While a certain amount of red chili can benefit one's health, too much consumption of it can worsen the conditions of patients with digestive problems. As we update you on Tzidi's disaster relief work in Mexico, we look at how Tzidi volunteers have been carrying out extra aid distributions. The original plan was to finish the distributions in December of last year, but the volunteers extended them till mid-January 2018. Tzidi volunteers have helped a total of more than 10,000 households. Tzidi's Mexico disaster relief crew keeps adding the aid distribution. What's the reason for them to do so? We followed the disaster relief crew to go into Coyacan District in Mexico City, and we can see that there are many affected residents still living in a tent area after more than three months. They did not receive any aid supplies or help, and they even had to bring their own tents, living a very difficult life. <laughs> It's very cold at night here, so we need to put on a plastic cover outside the tent so the cold wind won't come inside. I've never thought of being in this kind of situation, and the earthquake took everything I had. I'm really upset. Now our living condition is very hard, and many people lost their jobs, so the financial situation is also bad. The government gave us some assistance, but it's on and off and unstable. From the aerial video, we can see that there were 10 five-store buildings in the community and about 700 households are squeezing in the three tent area. Even the houses that did not collapse have become dangerous buildings that no one can live in it. The debris is marked left by the earthquake and it reminds people of their pain. No, it's dead. I didn't live here because there will be a memorial service for the death and that's when I'll be back. The loneliness and helpless tears represent the unfathomable misses for the adult on the memorial service. But the naive children still play around and laughing happily when opening the gift boxes. However, their innocence makes people feel for them more. I just saw some children playing around there and they seem so carefree and naive. But when I think of the fact they don't have a home for the new year or even something to eat, don't even mention gifts, I feel very bad for them for living in the park or children living in the refugee zone. 
Everyone participates in the discussion of the developing plan because they want to help as much as possible. They hope to pass down the selfless devotion spirit to the local volunteers. I've learned a lot from Zidji volunteers, especially from the visits. My heart goes out to the affected residents. I've also learned to be more patient and loving, so I can accept different opinions from the team members. The story of love and kindness continues as Tsuji volunteers have planted the seeds of compassion in the hearts of the locals in Mexico. As students from Tsuji University in Taiwan continue their exchange program in the Philippines, they've gone to visit impoverished families. Upon seeing how many families are struggling with poverty and illness, many students said that they've learned to cherish their own blessings. Among them is a student who grew up in South Africa. Let's take a look. In Pasig of Manila, in the crowded residential area, every household is an epitome of poverty and illness. Seeing how they care for me, I feel that I'm not the only one facing problems like this. Parang um, naisip ko na hindi lang pala ako yung may gantong klaseng problema. Things like these are not new to Ling Chilo, who grew up in South Africa. Therefore, she has learned to cherish everything she has. Because I've been in Taiwan for four years, so I've kind of was starting to forget that feeling. So when I came here and I see conditions like this, I started reminding myself that as a youth, we need to work hard. A students from Tsuji University in Taiwan follow local volunteers to visit impoverished families. They've seen a different kind of life. They've captured the worries of the adults as well as the innocence of the children. From the first alley to the more than a hundred alleys, there are children running around. It makes me reflect upon my life and I feel that we are quite fortunate. The overseas trip has made the university students think about the true meaning of life as well as learning to cherish their own blessings. Higher education in Taiwan is experiencing a crisis as it is more difficult to recruit outstanding students. Many excellent students, even teachers, are going abroad. Even City University of Hong Kong president is Taiwanese. Many university professors say low salaries, a poor promotion system, and saturation in teaching posts are the main reasons for leaving the country. Here is our report. Hong Kong is a densely populated city with many universities, some with small campuses. This dormitory for the Hong Kong Baptist University is considered the most luxurious accommodation because it is located in Kowloon. There are strict controls in place regarding who can enter this dorm as it provides a range of different facilities. A living environment comparable to a five-star hotel and an affordable price and greater convenience when compared to other living options attracts many students. Furthermore, according to the QS 2017 World University Rankings, the University of Hong Kong ranks 26th in the world, 30th is HKUST and 49th is City University of Hong Kong and 76 is National Taiwan University. In the media, HKUST President Tony Chan has expressed his desire to be on par with elite international schools. For this, the university specially hired 65% of its staff from overseas, regardless of cost. Another university president with the same ambition is Wei Guo. We seek professors that are better than us. Some may think that this makes them feel inferior, which is one of the problems with Chinese culture. But this is quite acceptable in the U.S., which is one of the advantages of American culture. Discussing his concept of education with these students is 65-year-old President Wei Guo, who is a member of Taiwan's Academia Sinica. While he is currently serving his second term, the board of this university decided to retain him until 2023. 
guys are so cool. So on the people side, Speaking fluent English is Jason Nee, an assistant professor at City University of Hong Kong, who teaches about traffic issues in metropolitan areas. Basically, the official language of Hong Kong's universities is English. We need to use English for our teaching and in our review. They check to make sure that we only use English in our teaching and teaching materials. Jason Nee is from Taiwan and has a doctoral degree from UC Berkeley in the United States as he specializes in transportation and urban planning. His Thai National Chung Gong University in Taiwan also served in the public sector in Macau. He has a brilliant resume and ultimately chose to work in Hong Kong because he wants to be truly outstanding rather than simply average. In Taiwan, because most of the industries are based on high-tech industries, now we're developed far away where the demand for setting up factories and offices is not the same. This makes the urgency of higher education in Taiwan relatively more closed when compared to Hong Kong. Taiwan's downturn in the economy has affected pay for university faculty. Salaries for assistant professors in Taiwan average about 2,000 U.S. dollars a month and about 2,750 for associate professors, with full professors getting 3,450. After deducting the difference in cost of living, Hong Kong professors earn two to three times that of Taiwan. I feel this matter actually applies to me. I think that the current government of Taiwan has an opportunity to improve in many different fields, such as creating an environment which offers more salary. I feel that when our country has more educational resources, we will consider closing this pay gap with neighboring countries, as this is a goal that we should work toward in the future. The wage gap has become one of the reasons why professors have gone abroad, which has been a problem for Taiwan. However, some professors say there is a price to pay for high salaries. It may look attractive, but not many people see the hard work and sacrifice that is also part of the deal. Harry Wu is an assistant professor at the Faculty of Medicine at Hong Kong University. He was a practicing psychiatrist in Taiwan with a doctoral degree from Oxford University. Before going to Hong Kong, he taught at Nanyang Technical University in Singapore for two years. While his resume may seem enviable, he says that there are too many professors to meet market demand in Taiwan. As long as it is an English-speaking place or one that uses Chinese, I sent my resume. I must have applied to more than 50 universities, including those in the United Kingdom and the U.S. and even China. Good students need good teachers to guide and inspire them. With Hong Kong willing to pay more, Taiwan's Ministry of Education has launched a plan to recruit more talented educators to enhance the competitiveness of domestic education. Many hope that teachers who decide to stay in Taiwan will have more chances to grow and succeed. In Malaysia, the new school semester starts in January. Local Dai mothers provide uniforms and stationery for students at the Indian Elementary School in Kedah. We'll leave you with these images at the end of the program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.